Throughout the world, there are many cultures who honor the belief of a spiritual connection to hair. Our indigenous elders have taught us for generations that our hair is a gift from Creator. To this day, we fight adversity to keep our culture alive by wearing our braids. At the time I was being bullied, all I understood was there was a mean people and the people that you knew didn't understand. I was maybe seven years old and I was at Stampede. I had long hair and you know, you hear people, oh, look at that pretty little girl there, she has long hair. I'm not a girl, and, you know, that, that whole thing, eh? And then there was the ones that actually said, you're a girl, you look so pretty, and they, they would say it mean. But then there was also the times where you would have teachers unknowingly, not make fun of you, but make you feel bad because you had braids. All the times where I would be going into the boys' bathroom, I'd be told, no, no, you can't go in there, that's a boys' bathroom. Or, oh, you're such a pretty little girl, or things like that. Again, it wasn't, that they were being malicious or mean, but it was not understanding that a boy can have braids. Being mistaken for a girl does a number on your self-esteem. One of the one things that I really take a lot of responsibility for myself as a mother to ensure that I'm speaking up for my son and talking to the teachers. My son going into grade one, you know, the first day I said to his teacher in a non-Indigenous school in Calgary, I said, you know what, nobody touches his braid. No teachers can touch his braid. I said, no students can touch his braid. We need to make sure that his hair is not being pulled. And it's important for our family to keep our braids and to not cut our hair. So. I'm going to speak to every one of the, the staff to make sure that this doesn't happen. And unfortunately, we did have to move schools quite a few times, and that was an issue where kids were going behind him in line and pulling his braid and running away. My grandson was being bothered big time at school, and finally he couldn't take it anymore and so I made an appointment with the principal and I went in with his mother and we sat down with the principal and she listened and I mean she really listened and so she understood where we were coming from with the issue that we were raising about these kids not knowing what they should be doing. She did a great job of talking to those teachers and letting them know that they were a part of the solution. They had to be a part of the solution. And so for that year, it got much, much better. And he was able to go through the year with very little of bullying going on. However, when he changes grades, now we run into new kids. And so you have to re-educate again. And then if the principal changes, then you got to re-educate again. It's difficult at times for us to have to repeat these situations with staff and students that it's not acceptable and that we need to ensure that children who come into school with long hair, that they need to be respected. It doesn't only affect the boy who's being bullied with the braids. It has a ripple effect and it affects the mom and dad and the grandparents and the siblings and the aunts and uncles. What made me really realize that was when my daughter had to bring a picture of her family to school and the boys in her class started making fun of my husband's braids. And she came home and she was really hurt about it. And it made me realize that even though I have daughters and not sons, they are getting bullied about my husband's braids indirectly. And this is something that affects whole families. If they're bullying you, a lot of them are uneducated or they're not raised right. So some of them don't even give themselves the chance to understand who you are. And if you don't educate somebody or correct them, they're gonna keep doing the same thing. 
I do think a lot of bullying does come from misunderstanding. There is a deeper meaning. It's not just for fun or because they think it looks cool. There's actually a deep meaning behind it. And there's an importance behind it that these kids are carrying. There is a ton of ignorance about braids. The good thing is that ignorance is curable. Beyonce, Ned, parents, Geraldine and Lloyd, and lots of family and friends wearing Bears Hurricanes and Oilers sweaters with his name in three syllabics. It spells Musquat, free for Bear. Looks to be one of the most popular sweaters at Rogers Place. We were kind of talking about this earlier, how your community, there's not a lot of people who have long hair. What do you think was a contributing factor to the loss of braids or long hair in your community? residential schools. I truly believe the churches knew the full implications of cutting our hair. It was intentional. I was told as a young girl never to cut my hair here. My grandparents used to always tell us to take time to comb it and to be proud that you've got braids, that you've got long hair. But once I got into school, I remember them cutting my hair. And I remember, how am I gonna tell my mom? How am I gonna tell my dad and my grandparents, you know, that they did that to me? Why didn't you fight for it? Eh? I couldn't, you know. I dreaded the day that, you know, that I was gonna go home and let them see me without, without hair. And the way they combed it, the way they pulled it, the way they took no, care of no it. They had no respect eh? for it. Yeah, they had yeah. no, no respect here. Eh? Day school eh? wasn't any different. We're just talking about it. George once but so he'd be 10. He didn't cut his hair all summer because he wanted to grow his braids. So, went to school, George, cut your hair. George, cut your hair. They kept telling him. And that Miss Zacharias, I'll never forget, she was a wicked woman. She must be still shoving coal for that devil. The scissors were this big, no lie. They were this big, and then she grabbed them right here. And dragged them right in front of the classroom. And she grabbed his hair and she cut And then uh, she said, now you go home and get your hair cut. And George was crying. That I'll never forget. They never allowed us to be First Nations people. They wanted to cut your hair. They wanted to try to scrub the brownness off your skin. They didn't let you talk your language. That's the only reason. So now people don't want to grow their hair out. It's just another way to get criticized, discriminated, and getting stereotyped. You know, that's why a lot of First Nations people go to drugs and alcohol, because some of the pain is so internal that they don't even know how to heal it. You gotta remember, after schools, the children went home angry. And that's how they grew up, without the background, without the steadiness. So yes, residential school was a start of the disassemblance of our identity. Modern day, you'd think it doesn't happen nowadays. Oh yeah, it still happens. When I was little, Going to school, I came home one time and I wanted to cut my braids off. My dad, he said, Jim, you came home one time 
went to bed, you were mad, you woke up and you washed your face and you left your soap on your face. I asked you what you're doing that for. And I told him, I just want to be white. Because I had a tough time, eh? Because I, I, it was clear to me that the, the white children were being pampered. They were being let go of some of the harsh things they did in school. Plus, in social studies, at that time, they still had us as savages in the textbook. At that time. And I got kicked out of class because of that. So, um... Long ago, they all had long hair, and they were proud of their hair. That's another way they know who you are. The Sioux, they call them Michikashta. They had parted their hair in the yeah. middle. The Crees always had their hair like this. Yeah. The Crows, them, they, they have it like that and they put clay on it. Not every warrior wore two braids. Some of them wore three braids. Some of them wore top knots in the front of their head. The reason that we did that was because if the enemy wanted my top knot, he wouldn't be sneaking up behind me to take it. You know, he'd have to face me in battle and defeat me to take my top knot. You must have seen pictures of Crowfoot. His hair up on top. There was a little medicine pouch. The hair protected that pouch up there. It was wrapped around it. My intention was always to have my hair long enough to touch Mother Earth. And at one point in my life, I did have the hair long enough to do that. So your hair is connected to your mind. The word for hair and the word for brain is the same word. Our hair outlives us. When we die, it still grows. That's why the first two things the gatekeeper asks is your hair and your fingernail. Because after you die, they keep growing. Those two things, everything else is dead, but those two things keep growing. One of the important things was to always have it in braids, not to let it fly. The word braid in Sikshika is Utukan. The literal translation of it is something that you twist around. That's what keeps the hair together rather than letting it fly. Ista Pupapoka means that it goes away and it's going to land some other place. And you don't want your hair to be like that. Uh, you want it to stay with you, so that's why they braid your hair. When we comb our hair, we're supposed to keep it. We roll it up and then we put it away. Oh, we bury it right away under water willows. The Crees, them, they burn it. Creator, he's gonna ask you, what did you do with all your gifts in your life? That means fingernails, hair, children. He's gonna ask you, what, what did you do with all those things I gave you? So you have to explain. You have to be in a position to say, I looked after myself. I looked after this gift, this body that you gave. I can tell you where I put my hair. My mother and father are really the main reasons that my hair is long. They're the ones that not only imposed it at first, but also encouraged it. And instead of just saying that your hair is long and that's the way it's going to be, they taught me why having long hair is important. 
the little things that I say when I'm braiding his hair. I say, you know, each strand has a meaning to it. When you grow up to be a man, you're gonna wear your hair long and you're gonna walk with honesty, faith, and forgiveness. I didn't grow up on a reserve. I didn't live near a reserve until I came to Calgary. And when I began teaching, I was trying to fit in as a teacher and you didn't wear a braid. What changed it was going to Bishop Grandin and working with those students. And you learn from those kids more than they, they learn from you. That's just the nature of teaching. The kids teach you. And so they were teaching me some of the things about their culture. And because I was only learning my culture at that time, I wanted to learn more. And I wanted to express who I was as an Indigenous person. And the way for me to do that personally was to grow my hair. I did some research on how important braids were. I talked to people who were from my First Nation. I talked to people who were from other First Nations. I, I talked to elders at Sutina and asked them about, why is it important to wear a braid? And the answers they gave to me supported me in knowing that my growing a braid was the right thing for me to do. To me, you know, we had to identify ourselves as who we really are. And one way was to grow our hair. After ceremonies were outlawed and, you know, the cutting of hair and braids for residential school, to wear your hair is a show of freedom. You have the right and the freedom to wear your hair today. We're still a symbol of defiance. I can remember one story that got me the idea to grow my hair out. We have a senior team back home, and my cousin, his name's Albert George, we call him Bert, he decided to grow his hair out. When I seen him for the first time with his long hair flowing out of his bucket, I was like, that is so sick. I want to look like Bert when I play. And I was always afraid to step out of my shell and kind of be myself and just go for it. But I think when I was playing in my second year pro, when I was in the AHL, I was kind of going through a slump in, within my career and I wasn't sure if I was ever going to get out of the AHL or where I was going. And I just needed some kind of motivation to help be who I am. And you know, when you're moving around within this world, it's easy to lose yourself and to get lost out there. I started growing it out. I was excited to wear it out of the bucket. For me, it just felt grounding, you know, like it felt it can be more of who I am and within my people, because we've always had long hair. It kind of helped me bring out my native side out of me and it just felt really good. It felt powerful. Even the title of our campaign, Braves Wear Braids, it's not just that our ancestors, the Braves, used to wear braids. It's that it takes a lot of bravery and a lot of strength to continue to wear braids. It's not something that you can hide. It will always be in people's faces. As soon as you walk into a room, they're gonna see your braids. Boys need to learn to wear them with pride, find that inner strength to keep going and to teach it to their own kids. If you hang on to an ideal, you fight for others for their identity. You become that person that is dependable. The lessons you had to learn in having long hair, the resilience that you have to have in putting up with people who misunderstand or don't accept you. You don't learn by reading a book. You have to learn them by experiencing them. And they are hard lessons, but they're ones that you carry forward with you into everything that you do. And it goes with your whole life. If you keep giving up, if you cut your hair, grow it again, cut, that's the way your life's gonna be. But if you keep your hair and say, well, this is the road I choose, and all the things that affect all the bullying, all the name calling, use it for wisdom. Make a book of wisdom and say, how did I overcome this? Then you become a problem solver. 
and you become a wise person. As you go and, and do greater things with your life, those strengths that you built up by having long hair actually help you to become more resilient. My granny used to say, Dinna aninahaka. Try and be somebody. There's one meaning. The other one is try to be a human being. And that's the hardest. Because being human being means you don't hurt people. You never take their dignity away. You're kind. And no matter how they hurt you, you forgive them in your lifetime. My grandma always said, love one another, respect one another. Try to understand where others come from. That's the biggest thing, because not all of us live the same lifestyle, but we're in this world to work together. When I think about role models or people that I look up to that have braids, they're all men. But when I think about who braided my hair in the morning and who helped me to care for it. It was, it was always the women. Traditionally, the women have more power than the men. To my understanding, is that they're powerful beings. Because only them and Creator can give life. You know, it's the mother that usually takes care of the kids. It's a mother's love that gives the pride into the child. Some days, some of those kids come over with such messy hair. Guess what my wife does? First thing, or my daughter, combs their hair out, braids it, you know. That's how much they love those kids. They want them to look beautiful every day. The mothers that do want their children to have long hair, it's tough on them to see what their children are going through. And a lot of times they have to fight through that battle with them. You know, when I decided to grow my hair out, yeah, I was nervous. I was scared. I was afraid to get criticized or what kind of backlash I'd get. I have to give a lot of credit to my support group. I started to feel more comfortable. They were encouraging me. They were supporting my decision and they loved it. And there was no criticism other than people who I don't know. It's not the person that's trying to grow the braids that needs the understanding. It's the ones that are doing the bullying. It's the ones that don't see it as important enough to defend. The teachers, the adults, you know. I've seen people where they just stand by and they look and they just sit on the fence and they don't do anything. Everyone has a voice. If you think their voice is bigger than yours, that's not true. When I first stepped out of my shell and I went to a public school, I felt like whatever I said was wrong. If that wasn't true. You know, I have a say in what I believe in and what I do. No one could take that away from me. And if you're doing the right thing and you're genuine, you're working hard and you're being true to yourself, you shouldn't be scared or feel like discouraged. Something I was always afraid to do is ask for help. And I think that's part of stepping out of your shell and being vulnerable at times. It could be scary, but it's something you have to do in order to grow as a person. The thing about allies is that anyone can be one. You don't have to be from the same culture, the same neighborhood, the same religion. If you see someone being hurt by someone else's words or actions, when kids realize that there's this permission, you have the right to step up and confront that person that's doing the wrong. Or if you don't feel like you have the strength to stand up to a bully, you can be a friend and an ally to the person being bullied. A lot of times, it was actually girls. Non-Indigenous girls, Indigenous girls, who really helped me to feel good about having long hair. They would compliment me, they would talk about how nice it looked. They provided a sense of pride that there was these cute girls that were looking at me. In a way, I like being cool sometimes.
I think it's imperative for my son to honor his hair and to continue that sacredness that we instill within Indigenous men to carry themselves with pride and to walk in a good way. I know when I see kids with braids, it makes me proud. Same with my wife, you know. It makes them look handsome. I think it shows you're proud. You believe in who you are and what your culture is. And you don't have to have long hair to show that or to be that, but you know what? For people who have long hair, I've always respected it. Spiritually, it's a way to be grounded to Mother Earth and our beliefs, and it's so powerful. I looked back at the pictures of when I was younger, and I had really thick braids, really thick ones. I really looked like a soot in me. That was cool to me, to have that look, and to have that ability to say, that's who I am. Day spring of life that gives us life.